Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about aortic stenosis. Aortic valve is a valve placed in uh, the outlet of the left ventricle. Through this valve, blood will go to the aortic uh, aorta and to the systemic circulation. Whenever this valve is stenosed, there will be pressure overload over left ventricle. That means normally the valve is uh, without any problem, it opens when there is a uh, uh, pressure from the left ventricle, valve opens that is uh, left ventricular systole. During that systole, blood will go to the aorta and to the systemic circulation. But when the valve is tight, difficult to open, uh, when the systole, during the systole, blood will not be able to pass through this aortic valve to aorta. Uh, uh, without any uh, like uh, normal manner. So, the com the pressure over the left ventricle increases. So, that means narrowed aortic valve that produces pressure overload over the uh, uh, left ventricle that produces left ventricular hypertrophy and later it will produces dilatation. The most common cause for uh, aortic stenosis will be a congenital disorder that is bicuspid aortic valve that occurs mainly in young patients or in patient who is having isolated uh, aortic stenosis. This is the common cause. But whereas other when other valves like mitral valve is involved, the common cause for aortic stenosis is rheumatic heart disease. Then in old age, it is due to degenerative atherosclerotic or sclerotic aortic valve that is the common cause for old age. So, degenerative or atherosclerotic aortic valve that occurs in elderly individual. So, the common causes are bicuspid aortic valve in younger individuals and when AS occurs isolated uh, AS, uh, when other valves are involved then it is mostly due to rheumatic heart disease. Elderly individuals it is mostly due to atherosclerotic or degenerative heart disease. Now, the most common cause for aortic stenosis and most common congenital heart disease is always bicuspid aortic valve disease. Most of the time, these patients may not have any symptoms, but rarely this bicuspid aortic valve can develop or go for aortic stenosis. So, that is one of the common cause for AS or AR, but when this AS or AR occurs due to Bicuspid aortic valve, normally other valves are not involved, whereas in rheumatic heart disease, mostly mitral valve also will be involved. Now, symptoms of aortic valve in patients who is having aortic stenosis due to acquired aortic stenosis, the symptoms occur very late. But whereas in uh, conditions like repeated uh, rheumatic heart disease, like repeated attacks of rheumatic heart disease, the symptoms can even occur in early age group itself. Angina occurs, dyspnea on exertion, syncope, especially post exercise syncope, dizziness, sudden cardiac death, all these things are most common causes for aortic stenosis. Now, why these patients develop dyspnea, syncope, angina, they are very important. Dyspnea occurs due to uh, uh, mainly due to left ventricular systolic function is uh, uh, reduced or it is uh, abnormal because of the aortic stenosis. That can produce uh, some amount of uh, reduced systemic circulation, back pressure on the left atrium. Then ultimately, it may lead to pulmonary edema also. So, reduced systemic circulation can produce uh, uh, weakness, lethargy, all these things. Back pressure to left atrium and pulmonary circulation will produce breathlessness. Syncope, it is due to the reduced circulation to uh, systemic uh, through the iota or reduced stroke volume because of the fixed cardiac output, especially when the patient doing some exercise. Mo normally, when there is an uh, exertion, uh, the uh, uh, cardiac output increases as a compensatory measure, but here it is always a fixed cardiac output. Whether you exert or not, the cardiac output is always fixed due to the uh, fixed type of aortic valve. So, uh, that produces syncope mostly after exercise. 
and China it is due to uh, the uh, demand supply mismatch because we can see that um, uh, when there is aortic stenosis left ventricular hypertrophy occurs and because of this hypertrophy demand increases but the circulation is same as uh, coronary arteries are same so the demand supply mismatch will produce angina so these are the causes for uh, dyspnea syncope and angina that these these three things are the most common findings in aortic stenosis now other clinical findings like on examination you can see low slow rising low volume pulse we'll see what it is bp low systolic bp this is called as systolic decapitation that is due to fixed and low cardiac output heaving type of apical impulse that is due to uh, enlarged left ventricle due to left ventricular hypertrophy heaving means when we are palpating the apical impulse you can see the uh, fingers are lifted up and sustained that is heaving apical impulse carotid thrill can be present because there is aortic stenosis this uh, this palpable murmur can even radiate to the carotid area soft second heart sound that is because the aortic valve does not uh, uh, close properly because of aortic stenosis um, so that produces a soft second heart sound now pulses parvus et tardis or slow racing low volume pulse uh, that is very important here in aortic stenosis uh, so pulses parvus is a small weak pulse pulses tardis is delayed systolic peak delayed systolic peak is a classical finding seen in aortic stenosis because uh, during left ventricular systole uh, there will uh, some delay in the opening of the aortic valve because of stenosis stenosis valve so it takes some delay in the systolic peak of peak of pulse and pulse volume is always low because there is a fixed cardiac output because of the aortic stenosis so that together produces pulses parvus et tardis or low volume slow rising pulse now once you see uh, the patient with aortic stenosis you can get that low volume pulse uh, systolic decapitation apical impulse is heavy on auscultation you get a typical finding that is a harsh ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area with a thrill with or without a thrill and the murmur and the thrill radiate to the carotid area also okay so s1 is normal because aortic uh, mitral area is normal in aortic stenosis so s1 can be normal there is an ejection systolic murmur especially in the aortic area that radiates to the carotid it can be associated with a thrill s1 is soft because because of this aortic stenosis during systole aortic valve opens with difficulty that produces low volume pulse but at the end of the systole normally aortic valve closes with a normal second heart sound here the aortic valve closure closure is very slow and not rapid that's why the a2 is uh, very soft here so depending on the uh, 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 le- severity of the lesion you can see here uh, the uh, the sound of the murmur can be increased so aortic stenosis produces uh, mild aortic stenosis produces very soft ejection systolic murmur but in severe aortic stenosis it produces very harsh ejection systolic murmur and even a2 p2 can be uh, altered here now a2 p2 split occurs in aortic stenosis you can see here expiration you can see inspiration and expiration there is a difference and in aortic stenosis there is a paradoxical splitting that means a2 occurs even after p2 so that is reversal of uh, paradoxical split of a2 p2 so in severe aortic stenosis and uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, left bundle branch block all these things p2 occurs early to a2 that that means a2 is completely delo- delayed so that is a problem in aortic stenosis but it will be very difficult to identify all these things clinically uh, if you record it properly uh, uh, you can see all these findings but ejection systolic murmur is very classical and soft a2 is also very classical in aortic stenosis now aortic valve sclerosis occurs in elderly individual so normally when uh, uh, aortic sclerosis is entirely different from aortic stenosis 
Atrix sclerosis means valve is sclerosed, uh, but there is no stenosis. But what happens is when there is a systol, normally uh, in a normal aortic valve, there will be some flexibility. That's why it will not produce any sound there. But when the valve is rigid, but it opens normally, since it is rigid, that produces a sound. So, uh, when there is a sclerotic aortic valve also, you can get an ejection systolic murmur, but there will not be alteration in pulse or BP. So, sclerotic aortic valve without stenosis, pulse is normal or rather it can be increased, that is because of the old age. So, sclerotic aortic valve, pulse is normal or slightly increased and BP, if we see that is uh, systolic decapitation in aortic stenosis will not occur here. So, sclerotic aortic valve is very important finding in elderly individual that actually produces a murmur, but it is not aortic stenosis. You can make out that because pulse is normal, BP is normal or BP is rather high in this type of patients. Pulse is also having uh, falsely high volume because of the atherosclerosis. So, this problem will produce a condition or phenomenon called as Galavadin's phenomenon. Galavadin's phenomenon is, uh, 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 is normally a get in sclerotic aortic valve. Actually, there is no lesion there, only a sclerosis of the valve is there. So, you get a ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area and the vibration of the valve produces another sound, but that sound is better heard in the mitral area. So, if you auscultate this patient, you get two types of murmur. There is a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area, there is an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, but if you examine this patient, there is no heaving apical impulse, there is no low volume pulse, there is no systolic decapitation, no other clinical finding, but you are getting two important murmurs. One is an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, another one is a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area and patient is completely normal. Suppose this is due to a mitral regurgitation and aortic stenosis, the findings may be very low volume pulse, systolic decapitation and patient will be some completely symptomatic. So, asymptomatic patient who is having two different types of murmur that is Galavadin's phenomenon. It is a normal condition, patient will be absolutely normal, no need to worry about this patient's clinical condition. Now, mostly uh, patient who is having aortic stenosis, there will be pressure overload over the left ventricle. Slowly, this pressure overload produces left ventricular hypertrophy. Initially, there will not be any shift of the apical impulse, but later when the ventricle enlarges, you can get uh, shifting of apical impulse towards the left and out and down. That produces heaving type of apical impulse because of the left ventricular uh, muscle mass. Now, ESM ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area can be due to various conditions like aortic stenosis, HOCM, systemic hypertension, aortic regurgitation itself can produce a flow aortic murmur, pulmonary ejection systolic murmur, mitral regurgitation can sometimes produce a, a, a radiation of murmur from mitral area to the base of the heart. So, say, so many conditions can produce ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, but to differentiate all these things from aortic stenosis, it is very easy. You see the peripheral pulse that is low volume pulse, you see the systolic BP that is low systolic uh, BP and uh, uh, other condition like uh, heaving apical impulse, all those things you can get in systemic hypertension and other condition also. So, it is very difficult to identify other conditions uh, like uh, HOCM and all from uh, this uh, type of disease. But low volume pulse, systolic decapitation, uh, ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, thrill in the aortic area, all these things are typical features of aortic stenosis. So, this chart helps you to identify different causes for aortic stenosis. That I am only reading the valvular aortic stenosis, other things you have to, uh, you can understand afterwards. Valvular aortic stenosis, low volume pulse, low systolic BP, heaving apical impulse, soft A2, ejection systolic murmur with thrill in the aortic area that is very classical. Whereas, aortic sclerosis, you can get all this, uh, you won't get all this peripheral finding, but you get only an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area. And because of the Galavadin phenomena, you can get a, get even a pan systolic murmur in the mitral area. So, uh, that we have to understand. 
Now, severity of AS uh, thrill in the aortic area, heaving apical impulse, A2 is delayed, that A2 P2 interval shortens, and sometimes it will be a uh, reversal that is paradoxical split. Long and late peaking of systolic murmur, soft or absent A2, presence of S4, all these things are indicating the severity of aortic stenosis. Complications LV failure, left bundle branch block, complete heart block arrhythmias, sudden cardiac death, all these things are the complications of aortic stenosis. And once you understand aortic stenosis, you have to some, uh, take some investigation like ECG will show the LVH or some arrhythmias, LBBB can be there, X-ray may show a left ventricular enlargement, echo will tell you what is the uh, uh, aortic valve area, mild more than 1.5 cm square, moderate 1 to 1.5 uh, centimeter square, uh, severe 0.7 to 1 centimeter square, critical is less than 7 centimeter square. So, echo will tell you uh, uh, what are the problems in the heart like left ventricular hypertrophy, uh, any mitral regurgitation is associated with that, what is a valve orifice. Then we have to always, look, any aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation, we have to always look for angio to see whether any uh, involvement of the aortic, uh, sorry, uh, coronary circulation or not because uh, many a times uh, aortic stenosis may be, uh, so since aortic valve, uh, the origin of the coronary arteries are near to aortic valve, many a times aortic uh, stenosis or aortic regurgitation can be associated with coronary artery disease also. So, angio is very, very important in all types of uh, aortic stenosis patients. Then once uh, uh, we diagnose aortic stenosis, calcified aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, aortic valve replacement is the tr treatment of choice. Surgical aortic valve replacement or transcatheter aortic valve, valve implantation that is TAVI are only effective treatment of severe aortic stenosis. So coronary angiography is indicated in most of the patients who is having symptoms like uh, angina, or any evidence for angina during evaluation, uh, all these things, angiogram also required. So, we have discussed about aortic stenosis, one of the most common uh, cardiac problem, especially in patients with rheumatic heart disease. Most of the time, aortic stenosis is associated with mitral regurgitation or mitral, regurgit mitral stenosis. But in patients with uh, uh, who is having bicuspid aortic valve, Mm, or Marfan syndrome, uh, isolated uh, aortic stenosis is also common, but they are not very, very uh, common comparing with uh, uh, rheumatic heart disease in our country. But uh, worldwide, uh, bicuspid aortic valve is very, very common. It is one of the most common congenital cardiac disorder, but most of these patients are normal without any problem. But these patients can develop aortic stenosis. In elderly individual, if the patient is having a aortic stenosis murmur, then you have to think about aortic sclerosis and some patients on echo finding, you can see aortic stenosis. If they are symptomatic, then we need to treat this patient. Many patients with aortic stenosis can come with severe breathlessness, angina or dyspnea on exertion to emergency room. So that also we have to take care. Breathlessness is mostly due to the uh, uh, back pressure to the left atrium and from the left atrium to the pulmonary circulation, pulmonary edema. Uh, the weakness is mostly due to reduced ejection fraction or fixed ejection fraction. Many patients develop post-exertional syncope in aortic stenosis. It may be very severe in HOCM. HOCM is not aortic stenosis. It is a subbiotic area obstruction, especially when the patient doing some exercise that is called as dynamic obstruction. So, HOCM also can produce post-exertional uh, syncope. Thank you.